I'm finally going to address the repeated root case for these linear constant coefficient homogeneous recurrence relations. And I'm just going to use a single example here, but it's really easy to um, do this for uh, other problems as well. Um, so the idea is I'm going to do the same thing pretty much as I did in video number 20 where I showed how you could look at a related differential equation and coax it into telling you the solution to the recurrence relation. So here would be the differential equation that looks exactly the same. Both of these have a repeated root of 2 and so the idea is we just take the differential equation and find out a way that it will tell us what the solution to the recurrence relation is. And you probably, well you might remember um, from differential equations that the solution to this one is a constant times e to the 2t as expected plus another constant and here's the unexpected part. Um, the other fundamental solution is the same thing but it's multiplied by t and that gives you your two linearly independent um, fundamental solutions but I'm guessing that you probably don't remember why that is so um, I'm just gonna very briefly because this isn't a video on differential equations that's on recurrence relations I'm gonna briefly um, talk about what those methods were um, so you could have converted this to a first-order non-homogeneous uh, linear differential equation and if you remember those, the, the first-order linear uh, differential equations are all solvable. They don't even have to have constant coefficients. Sometimes the solution will even be, well not for this type, but some sometimes you can have like non-elementary solutions and you can still find what the solution to the equation is in terms of an integral or something like that. But um, the idea is, even if you um, only remember this sort of algorithmic way to like regurgitate the answer, just multiply it by t, you can go back and figure out why this actually works. And it makes sense. It's not, uh, you, you can figure out why it works. And then another way you might have done it would be a little Laplace transform. And so the idea being, once you find your Laplace transform of y, that function of s. The denominator of the Laplace transform is always the same as the characteristic equation, so the denominator is going to have a repeated root, and essentially what you do is you just do a partial fraction decomposition. You'll have one, uh, you'll have one fraction with a, one rational function with a linear denominator, one with a quadratic denominator. You take the one with the quadratic denominator, you integrate it, that makes the denominator linear, and if you remember when you integrate uh, Laplace transforms of things, that's like multiplying their uh, associated time function by t. So you can get to it that way too, and there may be other ways to get to it, but the point is um, there are ways to do it, and so what I want to do is I want to take this recurrence relation and um, get the differential equation to tell me what the solution is. And the solution is no different, it's, it's really predictable, it's just a constant times 2 to the n, and then over here instead of t, e to the 2t, it's n times 2 to the n. Um, so it's exactly what you'd expect it to be, but the point is you can you can uh, boil things down to differential equation, which you do, uh, which you you can understand how they're solved without just knowing a formula. and then. Uh, just one other quick thing I want to mention with the differential equations is, well, this is probably the simplest repeated root equation. The root is zero, and anybody could tell you, anybody who's taken calculus one could probably tell you that the solution to this differential equation is linear functions. And so, like, heuristically, that's because linear functions have zero concavity, but of course this is not a hard um, fact to derive. Um, so the idea then is, um, I don't know if you, you might like this or something, like you can do the, you can say this is like the derivative operator applied twice to y, and if you shift that derivative operator 
two units to the left, what that does is it shifts the solution by this exponential function, so that's kind of a cool way to look at it. Um, Alright, so let's get to business with this thing. So we look at this differential equation, and the idea, using the same exact technique as in video 20, which I recommend you watch first, just going to take this and say, okay, we know, how, we know what the solution is, we know why it is what it is, etc. Just going to take that, um, maybe factor out the e to the 2t, and then repeatedly differentiate it. And so what you want to notice here is that if you just chose to differentiate this n times right off the bat, it would be horrible because this is, uh, this is a product rule thing going on here. And if you do repeat, uh, repeated product rules, you end up with these binomial coefficients and stuff, and it's horrible. You don't want to deal with that. So what you want to do is just um, do it a couple times, observe what the pattern is, just like I showed in the first couple recurrence relation videos. And if you feel so inclined, do a, an inductive proof of why the nth derivative is what it is. But the idea here is you take the derivative of this, you have to do a quotient or a product rule, you get this. You do it again. When you differentiate this, this 2 keeps coming down, and so you get this 2 squared over here. And then over here, um, you end up with this thing just comes over here. So you you uh yeah you can uh, you can kind of see why this is I don't want to like go through too much through the calculus of it it's not it's not hard to see why this is the key is at the beginning separating out this e to the 2t and what you have here is um I did this uh I did like four iterations of this because it is kind of a difficult pattern to see these twos keep going up in power and by by the time that you get to the fourth one, you can start to see the pattern. This is just if if this is the case where n is equal to four, this is two to the n. Um, this over here, these each of these things are two to the n minus one. And how many of them are there? There's one, two, three, four. So that's n. And so you can uh, you can do a proof by induction if you want, but it. So uh, the pattern becomes fairly obvious once you go through this process that this is what the solution is, or this is the nth derivative. And so then from there you just take it, you evaluate it at your favorite point, which is always zero for me, and this is what you get. And kind of oddly over here you have this 2 to the n minus 1, but you can fix that by fudging around with the arbitrary constants if I replace c2 with 2 times c3. I'll get this. So, this is the nth derivative evaluated at zero of the solution to this differential equation. And it's looking an awful lot like what, what we expect the solution to that recurrence relation to be. So the idea is that then, um, let's see, here we go. Now we, we finally uh, define what f of n is, because um, we're trying to kind of sneak up on this thing. We don't want to define f of n at the beginning. We define f of n as being the nth derivative of y evaluated at 0, and then look at what that tells us. So this was the differential equation. We differentiate both sides n times in its original form here. This is what you get. If you evaluate it at zero, it looks like this. And now we can see that this is just the different, or this is the recurrence relation that we're interested in. It follows as a result of this it, having this differential equation and defining it like this. But what also follows as a result is since we we know how to solve this differential equation and we found what the nth derivative of y is evaluated at zero, then we get a solution for fn. This is just the nth derivative evaluated at zero, which we determined to be this. I replace a c3 with a c2 just because it looks horrible to have c1 and c3. But that's the basic idea. So um, even though 
it seems kind of pointless to go through this whole process because it's exactly the same in the end anyway. Exactly what you'd expect. N kind of plays the role that T plays with the differential equations and stuff. Um, the differential equations, you do have like good methods for solving them. The Laplace transform and there may be, you might be able to do like variation of parameters or something like that. You can do you can redu reduce them to first order equations to figure out why that why this one ends up getting multiplied by t in that case. And so then you can see that this one just follows based on the exact same logic that the differential equation does.